let T be T. You can't use any chemicals. That's just as simple as that. If you're using chemicals, it defeats the purpose of growing tea organically. Even though products can be called organic, it doesn't mean that no chemicals or any substances have been used on them. What I like most in that is the attitude with which the producer approaches his production. Hey everyone, welcome to the Tea Crane. The Tea Crane is a specialty store for organic, pesticide-free and natural teas only. But there's a little bit of confusion about what organic really means. And so in this video I want to take the time to explain a little bit more about how I understand organic, what I feel organic should be and the stance that I take as the Tea Crane regarding organic, pesticide-free and natural teas. But before we get into that, and let me get dressed up and ready for the video, um, I would also want to quickly uh, remind you that we've improved, made some significant improvements to uh, the Tea Club. Because the Tea Club I started two years ago and I used the Tea Club to share uh, very rare teas, mostly teas that are somewhat um, well, smaller in quantities. I can't really have a lot of product of them in stock. And so with a small number of really interested people, I want to share these beautiful teas. So the tea club is mostly focused on those kinds of teas. And we've made some improvements there to um, produce better quality uh, content. Also bring the information that we want to share with you in a better designed and a better uh, laid out uh, booklet. And we're also doing videos uh, for club members only. So I think that if you enjoy tea and want to explore some rarities, the Tea Club is a really good fit for you. So um, don't forget to sign up. You can find out more information on the website uh, under Tea Club, or you can access it through the link uh, below. So, that being said, let's uh, dive into the, top, the topic of organic teas. So, I've chosen to sit a bit more comfortably here in front of my uh, tea shelf in the store. Um, this will allow me to talk to you a little bit more calmly and um, it's just a relaxed space and a, a nice area I like to sit at. And it's also my working desk. So. This is in the store where I conduct all my business. So on the topic of organic teas, there's one big issue with the concept of organic that, that I would like you to understand. That is that even though products can be called organic, it doesn't mean that no chemicals or any substances have been used on them. Um, it's the same way in Europe, it is like so in Japan. Uh, organic basically means that the producers of the teas have fulfilled certain rules that were set out by these um, organizations, by the government basically. And those rules include that you stick to a strict list of positive elements, elements or substances that you can use which not in uh, which don't have to be organic per se they can be chemical things but they are deemed safe enough for humans to consume and so they can be uh, taken into that group of organic substances substances that can be used for organic production uh, the other thing is that for certain of those uh, chemicals or pesticides there's a term when you can use them and when you can't use them. So if you fulfill that term and say two weeks before harvest you have not sprayed any chemicals um, <clears throat> you can check off a box on the list and you can sell your product as organic. And that is so with most of these uh, certifying bodies they just have a list of checkpoints 
and they go checking them as they go and that is how they decide whether or not a product can be organic. Now I find that that is a problem because in this way organic becomes only a name that you use as a sales ploy. You can say oh my product is organic because I've checked off all these boxes and well now I can sell it on the market for a higher price because people will pay more for organic because they believe that organic is something closer to natural. None of it, no chemicals, no pesticides have been used. Uh, the government has deemed that it is safe. Um, but what a lot of people don't realize is that actually still chemicals are being used, although they are constricted according to certain regulations. And I still see a lot of problems with that. And that is also why I slightly take a different approach to uh, searching organic pesticide free or natural teas for the tea crane. And one of the biggest issues that I still see is if we consider organic as a solution to environmental issues, then if you're only observing a period of time when you can and when you can't use uh, chemicals, then it is not resolving the issue. You are still putting stuff into the air, putting stuff into the ozone, putting stuff into the soil, in the water, in everything else that we consume, and it's still polluting the earth. If you look at it from our health perspective, it's not only what we consume directly, you might have sprayed <clears throat> the, the tea bushes and you've observed that period in which those substances will be washed off the tea bushes you might not be consuming it through the tea bushes itself but if you walk on a tea farm where it's just been sprayed or several days ago or even a week ago um, the farmer has sprayed his pesticides you will still be breathing it in you will be taking it home there there are all these um, issues for your own health as well even on organic farms where if these um, rules are observed um, it might not end up in the, in, in the final product, but you might have uh, some of these chemicals that are still affecting our environment, our health, and most of our welfare diseases, the diseases that we have stressed, um, stress kinds of diseases, um, burnouts, uh, cancer, um, the diseases that are dominating our present day, a lot of them can be traced back to um, the effects of these chemicals that are in the air that are not supposed to be there, the chemicals that are in our food, uh, the food that it is being created itself, the GMOs, um, everything there that, um, well, everything there is affecting us in a way that is not positive and so the way that I for the tea crane like to select my teas is not as if a checklist uh, I don't go to a tea farm and say well have you used any pesticides in the past three weeks no okay good that's a checkbook um, have you used um, this forbidden pesticide no okay good another check on the list that is not how I go about it and that's also not how I like to go about it and how I will not do it in the future. For the tea crane what I think is most important is the attitude with which the farmers that I work with um, approach their manufacturing, approach their tea cultivation. The, it, the attitude of the person is really important. I do for Sencha have in a separate category that I have named uh, liquid jade. These liquid jade teas, they are shaped in uh, my ideal image of what, a, what I think a traditional sencha is, was and should be like. And these liquid jades, for me, 
to begin with, they are grown from seed. Um, it's a natural process. The seed was planted and the tea bush has uh, produced a strong root and a strong stem and these bushes they are produced from seed. Uh, the environment is uh, protected by the farmer but it is not changed in a way to produce a kind of tea. The environment is just there to allow the tea to grow. So in my opinion it's a absolutely natural environment that I want to preserve and that I also want to I want my producers that I work with to preserve and doing that you become an entirely natural a wild and uh, an authentic tea just in the way as those wild tea bushes were growing hundreds of years ago from which the leaf was obtained to produce an uh, Tea. So, I believe that that is for me the ultimate goal of what a natural or an authentic or a traditional. For me, those are the, those words are they mean the same: organic, natural, authentic, traditional. They have the same meaning, and that uh, meaning for me is encapsulated in what I call liquid jade sencha. Uh, of course. You have different types. You have producers that also work with cultivars. You have producers that use an organic type of fertilizer that they help their bushes to grow with and somewhat add to the flavor of the bushes. Uh, some producers like to experiment with oxidation after harvest and so to give their bushes and uh, the, the leaf that they've obtained and, uh, and added aroma, others don't. So basically each individual producer approaches his harvest, approaches his production in a different way. And I appreciate that diversity. I also appreciate that there are different types of tea gardens and that one producer might work with different types of tea gardens. For example, he does absolutely natural production. He does nothing on one farm and then uses another type of for example a cultivar garden where he adds some fertilizer to the to the soil and treats his bushes in a certain way um, and he produces these two very different types of tea i i like that the diversity and what i like most in that is the attitude with which the producer approaches his production of course what is mandatory that's one checklist that I one checkpoint that I have is you you can't use any chemicals that's that's just as simple as that if you're using chemicals it defeats the purpose of um, growing tea organically but what you can do is you use natural substances or organic substances to um, to fertilize your tea garden. You might spray your bushes with coconut oil, like one of the producers does. He uses coconut oil to, um, I don't know which one it is, but it's either suffocate or to slide the, um, the little bugs off. And it, uh, it appears to work. It's a bit more work and it doesn't catch all the bugs and the bigger bugs he still have to, has to pick off with his hands, but he does, and um, he takes a natural approach to what other people would replace with chemical uh, substances. So that is an interesting approach and that is the starting point. That is where organic begins with me. And then from there on the producers they they have their own ways of dealing with the bushes and important in that approach is let tea be tea. The attitude that I respect most and expect from the producers that I work with is they allow tea to be tea. They create the environment in which their tea bushes can develop of their own accord given the nourishment that they receive from their environment and each tea bush individually, each tea garden individually 
produces its own specific characteristics and they are appreciated for it. What the producer does not do is push the tea bushes in a certain direction. Say, you need to become like this, you have to taste like that, which is what conventional producers do do. They make sure that the environment is not fertile, they add fertilizer to it and use a generic type of cultivar so that they can monitor and direct the outcome of the tea bushes. And so that is okay for the conventional big tea industry, but for the tea crane and what also these smaller producers like to do is to create that authenticity. The tea bush can develop of its own accord, it's its own little diamond and it produces the, the specific characteristics that it as an individual tea bush uh, has. And so each tea bush does that for itself individually. Each tea garden is different from another garden, even with the same producer. And so we get a whole uh, world of diversity, diverse types of teas, although they are produced by the same producer. That is what the tea crane focuses on. <clears throat> it is to introduce that authentic diversity that is in line with how tea was produced traditionally hundreds of years back and to stop this dangerous trend towards chemicals and pollution because it really harms our health, it harms our planet and I think through enjoying these organic types of teas more, we can better appreciate the gifts that nature has to give, we can better align with the beauty that nature has to give and we better understand it because we can savor it, we taste it, it becomes part of our body and it also opens us up to what mother nature uh, has in store for us Mother Nature is always there for us and we are turning our backs on her too much these days. And so I think through engaging with nature through tea, through natural types of tea, we can get a better appreciation for Mother Nature again and we can see our existence in essence for what it is. So I hope this has shed some light on how I, as the tea crane, approach selecting organic, pesticide-free and natural teas and what these words actually, actually mean in the context of the tea crane. Um, I hope that you share my thought and share my vision on what I think tea production and for that matter farming in general um, should be. Of course there are lots of, uh, lots of issues, uh, say for example how, how much can we produce of it, how wide can it be available. These are um, large issues of course if you work with small quantities. Um, so if you have any thoughts on this, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'm always happy to answer more questions, I'm always happy to talk to you about these topics and how I view tea, how I view the manufacturing, the cultivation of tea, the cultural aspect of it, so I'll be producing more videos like these and so if you want to stay updated on new releases, feel free, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and also click the bell so that updates reach you immediately once a new video gets out. So thank you for joining me for this video, it was a bit lengthy but I think it was worth it really explaining this point in great detail and I'll be looking forward to seeing you again in the next video. Enjoy your tea.